Welcome back guys, this is your fourth video of Spring Boot Essential Training Series. In this video I'm going to teach you how to use Spring Initializer to create your Spring project. In the last video we created a Hello World application and if you watch that video you know that we had to manually create our Maven project, we had to add the dependencies, we had to create an HTML document and uh, yeah, we used the Spring to show that HTML document on our server, which was Tomcat. Now, with the Spring Initializer, you can really automate your process of creating a project. Let's click on Generate Now, and we'll get to this page. The link for that page is start.spring.io. Now here, the first of all, you need to see what kind of project you want to create, whether it's a Maven or a Gradle project. I will select a Maven project and version of your Spring Boot. So here we have 2.0, 1.54 snapshot, but the most stable one is 1.5.3. Now, once you've done selected your Spring Boot a version, then let's go to the project and meta. Now, same as when you create a project in IntelliJ ID or Eclipse or NetBeans, you need to give a group ID. So that's the same thing. So here we will just say, gallery app okay so artifact is your project name we'll just say gallery app right and then I'm gonna click on this switch to full version so once I click on that I get to choose the name of my project description for that so I'll just say a gallery app to show dynamic images right package name is there our packaging is set to jar which is all right and then we need to select the java version so we go to command prompt and then we we'll check java space version so as you can see i have 1.8 so i'm good to go if you have 1.7 or 1.6 java you need to change the java version from here let's select 1.8 a language is java you can select Groovy and kotlin as well but we'll work on java now this is the important part here remember in the last video we had to add a dependency manually but here now we can select what are the dependency we need so obviously we are creating a web application so we'll select this web and here you can see full stack web development with tomcat and spring mvc all right so we got that and then we need to select our template engine template engines there are like five or six that are available here but what i choose is team leaf so let's select Team Leaf. From here, it says that Team Leaf templating engine include integration with Spring. So that's what we want, right? Now we need a bit of a Java, uh, sorry, database as well. So we'll use this Java Persistent API, which basically lets you manipulate the data it's using Hibernate or any other. If you use, want to use the JDBC, like MySQL, so you can use that as well. But we'll select JPA. Let's go down. Now, we, do we need any uh, database here? So like no SQL database. So MongoDB, if you're familiar with MongoDB, you can select that. And we have so many more uh, NoSQL databases. Cloud Core, we don't really need anything else. So we can just simply go down because every dependency need a separate video or a separate course to explain what are these, why we need them, right? So for now, it's a basic course. So we'll just select web. We select Team Engine, which is Team Leaf. We select JPA, Java Persistent API, and then we simply go down and then click on Generate Project. Now, once I click on Generate Project, as you can see here, we got the project downloaded into our PC, so named Gallery App. I'm gonna show that into the folder, and let's just cut this, and I'm gonna take this into my Java projects where I really save my project, so I'll just drop that into idea projects. Let's paste that here and then right click and then extract it. So once you have extracted that zip file, you will see that file here. So gallery app is there. We don't really need that zip file anymore, so I'm just going to delete that. Now, let's go to your choice of IDE. So I'll select IntelliJ IDEA. Now, we are going to open that project, right? So I'm going to click on Open, 
and then we need to go to that uh, directory there so let me just find that directory and there we go we have the gallery app okay so just expand that and there's a second folder here right and I'm gonna click OK and now you can see IntelliJ IDEA has opened that project we got our source folder with the main and resources folder is there our unit testing folder is there and if I go to Java directory and here we have the package name we created com.gallery app and then we have the gallery app application file as well I'm gonna double click on it and then there we go so in the last video we had to manually type this code but because we're using that initializer it automatically created a, a skeleton of our application so it's basically up and running now okay so we go to the maven I'm gonna refresh make sure I refresh all the dependency what I selected and we go to POM file as well so as you can see in the POM file we got our group ID which was apparent in the last video we had to add that manually but here we can see that it's been added for us uh, automatically so we have some dependency here uh, we have the Spring Boot framework we have the starter theme leaf as well as you can see that theming engine and then another uh, boot starter web and then we have the test as well right so where POM file is uh, set up properly and then I'm going to let's just uh, go to main and then the resources folder and as you can see in the last video we had to create this static because theme leaf is a template engine so it knows a way to look for into your project so right now the Java files whatever you create like a data file like a model or controller so controller know where to look for the front end for the application so it will look for static and then templates and we have this application.properties file in application.properties file you could do a bunch of settings but uh, I'll show you one setting that you could do now let's build this project and then I'm gonna run it and then let's just run this as well so we need to right click here and then run this application and now at the bottom in the terminal you will see that spring is starting and a few things I want to point out here okay so can I determine embedded database driver for database type none we don't have any database yet but uh, we can fix this the reason we're getting this error is because if we go back to initializer page in the Java persistent API we have to select one of the databases as well so I was supposed to select this uh, H2 so I didn't actually select that that's why so we can fix that we can add that dependency manually now H2 Maven central dependency and we should see that now so we go here we select the top version and then we can add this dependency so let's select that let's copy that and then let's go to IntelliJ IDEA and then go to POM file and in the dependencies we can add this as well so let's paste that here and let's save the file and it should update that so I'm going to click on enable auto import it will import that uh, S2 database for us so it should be importing in a second I'm gonna stop the server and it's given an error dependency yep it's been downloaded now as you can see error went away now let's start the server now it should work there we go now you can see our server has started Tomcat has started port 8080 uh, started game gallery app application started now let's just verify that into a browser we we'll just go to localhost 8080 and there we go our server is up and running application is up and running now now we can use the team leaf uh, agents to create an interactive front end and then a back end as well we'll do a project but uh, a few things I want to show you before I finish this video here 
So I'm going to application.properties file. Here you can see that our server was started at port 8080. But what if you want to change that? What if you are running like few servers, like five or six servers, right? You can't run the same server, like multiple servers on the same port. So what you can do here, there's a property server.port is, is equal to 8000. Okay. There we go. So now it says Tomcat started on port 8000, right? Instead of 8080, now we can verify that as well. So we just go to port 8080 and it shouldn't give us anything. But if I change this to 8000, enter, and there you go, our server is up and running. If you're not sure, I will just create a quick HTML file and we'll just look at the title spring app and then let's just say image gallery app okay let's save the file stop the server and then let's run the server again so we'll just click on run the server again and as you can see in the application the properties file we set that server part is equal to eight thousand so let's say you are running a project in NetBeans and separate project in Eclipse so you can't just have the same port for every single project now we go to browser and I will just verify that 8000 and should be working there we go image gallery app and the title spring app is there now so our project is set up and uh, in the next video we're gonna start working on Spring Boot application. I will develop a dynamic image gallery application which will have we will follow the MVC pattern model view controller pattern. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Chase.